I guess years went on. Not that many, really. I I, I got signed. I say I met I met my bandmates Rigor Mortis uh, when I was pretty young, probably around 18 years old. I knew the singer. I met the singer when I was about 14, 15, and uh, we were listening to a lot of. Uh, you know, we're talking like early 80s here, so metal was was just really being born. Thanks to bands like uh, Iron Maiden and Judas Priest, you know, other bands started popping up like Anvil and Raven and early Metallica start, you know, happening. So we were loving this, you know, Motorhead, The Rods. We were like, I was like, man, this is where I want to go. So I figured with my with my double picking, I could really take, you know, take something and start something new. And so glam metal started coming out. And we hated that stuff, you know. Uh, when I look back on it, I don't know why. I love, you know, a lot of that, a lot of the music, but uh, I was just, it really just made me mad, you know. Um, I just didn't feel like the musicianship was there. It was all about the look, and we were about playing, you know. So we wanted to be the fastest, heaviest, most disgusting thing on the planet, right? And uh, so I took my, my, my thing, and uh, we started doing songs like that. Like we would take uh, uh, you know, Iron Maiden songs and, I, and we would speed them up beyond belief until we started writing our own stuff. And uh, uh, you know, we kept practicing and practicing, of course, and, and joined in the punk scene there, which was unheard of because we were all long haired and, and uh, dirty. And the punk rockers were all skin, either skinheads or spiked hair, so they were like, what are you doing here? So we were the first bunch of guys to come in the mosh pit and fight and, and be right in there with those people. So we kind of created this really cool thing in Dallas. Pantera was more in, in Fort Worth side, and they were kind of a glam thing going on at this time. And we were hardcore, you know? Um, and... Uh, there were so many fights, and we were starting to depress so much that record labels started just coming at us like crazy. We sent our, we did a demo for like two hundred dollars. Horrible, horrible demo. We made five hundred of them, uh, and we sold them all. They're all gone, you know. Uh, and I think there's like six, seven songs on there. We sent them to all the independent labels like Metal Blade, Megaforce, Combat, all that stuff. They hated it. In fact, one of them said, don't quit your day jobs. I'll never forget that. Um, so for the hell of it, we sent it, started sending it to the major labels. What do we got to lose? We already, you know, we were, they already told us we, we were horrible. But we knew we weren't. We knew we had something new, you know. And uh, major labels started coming out. You know, we opened for Megadeth, Longhorn Ballroom in Dallas. That was a historical show for us. Um, because Megadeth at the time, I think that was a first or second record, and uh, uh, you know Longhorn Ballroom, that's where the Sex Pistols played, Hank Williams, I mean, it, it was a historical place. So we played there, and our, our crowd just, ex our fan base expanded like crazy to where every time we played, it was pretty much sold out, and labels were coming like crazy from Geffen, uh, Capital Island, uh, you know Warner Brothers, Electra, they were all coming down and hanging out with us. Th just thought we were something they'd never seen before, and we kind of were, you know. And uh, we wound up getting signed to Capitol Records. We did a showcase, and I'll never forget. I practiced so hard for this. We had a song called "Back from the Grave." And it had it featured a guitar solo in it. Back in the 80s, it was all about, you know, drum solos and guitar solos. And so I always did a guitar solo. And uh, I remember I practiced so much that my hands swelled up like a grapefruit. And I had to go to the doctor and get injections in it and steroids. And I had a showcase to do. So the doctor was like, you got to take some time off. And oh, man, no way. I got This is my life. I got to get signed. We're getting signed tonight. So uh, went there, hands all bandaged up, and we did the showcase, and um, boom, signed on the spot. Unbelievable, could not believe it. Capitol Records, 20, 21 years, 20 years old, 
uh, uh, wow. Uh, it was uh, it was like a dream come true, definitely, because not many people can really say that. Uh, we had a substantial amount of money handed to us to get started, a producer, engineer, and we went in the best studio in Dallas and, and laid a record. Well, at that time, uh, that's when I met Al Jorgensen, the guy who was running his uh, house engineer um, was, was Dave Ogilvie, who produced like bands like Skinny Puppy a lot of industrial stuff. So Capital thought it would be cool to have this industrial guy who knew nothing about metal to produce us. Great, great idea, great guy, did not work. <laughs> um, the record just, great songs, but we were not happy with it and it just didn't, it wasn't us because we were a live band and we needed, really needed a metal producer for that. But, um, you know, 20 years old, what are you gonna do? You, you're pretty stupid then. You know, I don't want, I would never want to be 20 again. You know, I'm, I'm happy at my age right now, believe me. But at that time I met Al and, uh, and we just hit it off perfect because we were both young, and crazy and, you know, partying all the time and, and, uh, and didn't take any crap off anybody. And he loved my demo, the first demo and loved the record and, and, uh, we just hit it off, like we basically became really good friends. And then uh, a couple of years later, he called me um, with uh, with an idea of, hey, you know, I want to take your guitar and I want to put it to my, you know, my sampling and and techno sound and and start something new. And that's how that whole genre. So it's it's pretty cool that I can actually say I I, I didn't personally start it. But I helped kickstart two genres of music, uh, the whole speed metal, because Bigger Mortis was a speed metal band. We weren't um, a death metal band. You know, we were, because we, because you could hear our singer. You could understand what he was saying. He wasn't, you know, Cookie Monster in a blender. He was, he was actually, you know, you could hear his words. And, uh, and you could hear my guitar. My guitar was always in 440 and, uh, and it was all about, you know, massive soloing and, and stuff like that, which eventually I finally got a grip on it. But um, that's pretty much how, how it all started. And I'm 